Hey yogis, where does yoga come from? If you ask anybody these days, I'm sure they would be like, uh, duh, it comes from India. And yeah, that's right, but there is so much more to yoga's history. And I think as a yogi, it's not only important, but like also kind of interesting to learn about where yoga came from. Yoga was first ever mentioned in the Vedas. So the Vedas are a group of four ancient Indian texts. And people spend their entire lives studying the Vedas. Um, they're basically like impossible to translate. They're in um, Vedic Sanskrit and there are a bunch of like mantras and rituals. I have never read them, but I do know that like they are some of the most important texts that we have, especially for Hinduism. Like those texts are, they're it. And the word Veda means knowledge. So these texts are thought to contain knowledge of the divine, knowledge of our existence. And that's where yoga was first mentioned, which is pretty cool. So first we have the Vedas, then enter the Upanishads. And this gets a little confusing because like the Upanishads are part of the Vedas, but they're like also not really the same thing as the Vedas. So they're basically like the latest edition of the Vedas. And the Upanishads deal a lot more with philosophy. Um, and they really kind of emphasize the interconnectedness of all things. A quote that I really like from the Upanishads that I think does a good job of explaining the gist of the Upanishads is this. He who sees all beings in the self and the self in all beings no longer hides in fear. Okay, so we got the Vedas, we got the Upanishads. Next comes the Bhagavad Gita. And I'm sure you have heard of the Gita. So what the Gita does is it takes all of the knowledge in the Upanishads and the Vedas and puts it all together in a story, which is like a dialogue. And what we can draw from this story is that like life is hard and we all deal with internal struggles. The best thing we can do is know our true selves. And the best way we can do this is through yoga or meditation. That's kind of the gist of the Bhagavad Gita. There's way more to it than that, but that's the gist. We've got the Vedas, we've got the Upanishads, and we've got the Bhagavad Gita. And the Bhagavad Gita, the best way I've heard it explained is the timeless first book of yoga. That's really the Gita. So what comes next? Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. I'm sure we've all heard of that. So Patanjali took everything from the prior three texts and systematized it. He put like an order to it all. He said, hey, this all is great, but here is the path. And he created the eight limbed yoga path, the eight limbs of yoga. And this is really the best guidebook to yoga that we have today. So we've got the Vedas, which was the first place yoga was ever mentioned. Then we have the Upanishads, which is more like the philosophy of yoga. Then we have the Gita, which was the first time yoga, the yoga paths were really talked about. Then we've got Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, which is like the best guidebook that we have to yoga and really outlines the steps to yoga. So from Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, we get Ashtanga Yoga and Iyengar Yoga. Those two things were brought to the US around 100 years ago. And really yoga got a lot more physical at this point. Um, these practices were vigorous and physical. I, you still did get a lot of the meditation and maybe even some mantras in these classes, but they're primary physical. And like, I don't want to say this is good or bad. It just sort of is what happened. Um, from those two practices, Ashtanga and Iyengar, Vinyasa Yoga sort of came out of that. And so did like a bunch of other things. Like I'm really simplifying it. But if you were to go to a yoga class in like New York or LA or SF, um, you're going to have a class that like kind of has some elements of Ashtanga or Iyengar in it. And where I want to kind of wrap this all up is modern day yoga. Yes, super physical, but you're still going to do Shavasana most likely at the end. And that meditative place like came from just that concept of meditating to see your innermost self came from like years and years and years ago from these like ancient texts. And some teachers actually will still say mantras from the Vedas. 
And like, that's really kind of cool that this deep history of yoga three, 500 years ago, um, right? Like this place yoga was first ever mentioned. Sometimes like it is still incorporated in classes today and it's really cool. Um, I think whether or not you practice yoga just for like the physicality of it, or if you're into the philosophy part of it, it's just interesting to know where it came from and how it got to where it is today. So I hope you enjoyed this and more to come.